Hi everyone, Zach with Magnum Bikes here, back again today to go over the build procedure on the all-new Magnum Metro S. The first thing we're going to go over is the spacer configuration on your steer tube that will aid in the stem and handlebar assembly installation. So the first thing you're going to want to do is a preemptive step and it's going to make your life a lot easier come time to install our stem. This 5mm bolt here controls the tension on this pivot of the stem and it comes reasonably tight, tight enough to where it can't articulate so you're gonna to wanna to loosen that up until that can articulate and it's gonna expose this hole here that houses the five millimeter bolt that's gonna suck everything tight. What I do is gently lay it down so we don't mess up any of our cables or housing. I use my left hand to brace the fork under the brake bridge here so it doesn't fall out. And then on top here, we have another five millimeter bolt. We're gonna completely remove that And we're going to be removing all but one of these 10 millimeter spacers. So you're gonna want one spacer along with your Nico bearing cap. That's all you're gonna need. That's a safety and aesthetic measure there. From there, we're gonna take our wiring harness and go ahead and install that first. Take your time here. Be gentle with the system. And then we're gonna go ahead and install that stem on our steer tube. So now that we have our stem installed onto our steer tube, this is where that five millimeter bolt comes in. So if you drive your five millimeter Allen wrench down through that hole that we discussed earlier, you'll feel it connect with a bolt and we're gonna to wanna to start tightening that. This is gonna adjust your bearing tension that allows you to steer smoothly with no wobble. So we're gonna keep going just until we face a bit of resistance so right there for me, we're gonna do a test, make sure it spins freely and that there's no wobble or play in those bearings. And we're all set there. Now that we have our bearing tension set, we're gonna go ahead and begin adjusting our handlebars roughly to where either you or the rider would like them. There we go. Now from here, we're gonna use a five millimeter Allen wrench yet again and start tightening that bolt that we loosened earlier to make our lives easier. You wanna make this bolt fairly tight. This is a load bearing piece, so we definitely wanna have safety in mind here. Once you start facing a good amount of resistance like I am there, go ahead and close it up and you will hear a click letting you know it's engaged and always double check, make sure that's nice and seated. So now that we have our stem and handlebar assembly all set up, it's time to install our pedals. So in the rider's perspective, you do have a right hand and a left hand pedal. On the right hand side, it's a normal thread. On the left hand side, it's counterclockwise. And it's very important to take note of that. On the pedals that we supply, there will either be a sticker stating R and L respectively, or on the bottom end of the spindle here near the threads will be stamped R and L that you can see accordingly. We're gonna take a little bit of grease here. Today I've got Park Tools Poly Lube. You can feel free to use any bearing grease or marine grease that you have laying around your house and we're gonna use just a little bit. This is gonna prevent seizing in the future if you need to change your pedals and what have you. So I have our right pedal here. Go ahead and engage it with the threads, line it up as best as you can, and you can start pedaling backwards. You'll feel those threads catch and start to engage. As always, if you feel any binding or additional pressure, back up and start again. We don't wanna strip anything out, especially on your new bike. And once you've got that hand tight, you can use a 15 millimeter box wrench like I have here, a pedal wrench or the tool in the kit supplied. And we're, again, we're gonna pedal backwards and just tighten that up nice and snug. Put most of your body weight into that. We'll step around and do the left hand pedal. Same thing. Gently feel those threads start to engage nice and smooth. There we go. And same thing, nice and tight. And there we go. All right, so we're just about finished up. The first thing we're gonna do for the front end of the bike is install our quick release lever. So your quick release lever has two springs on it that we can see here. You'll notice that they're both pointing in. That comes in handy here. What we're gonna do 
is go ahead and unthread the nut from the other end and take one of those springs with us. Now we'll take it with the one spring there and insert it through the hub. We want the cam switch here on the side with your disc brake rotor. We're going to push that through and install the other spring again facing in towards the hub and that nut. And then we're going to go ahead and install our fender and light. It's going to make it easier on all of us. My series of steps here is to go ahead and install the light cable into the headlight first. You'll notice there's a small orientation marker. Just make sure you line that up. And it is a nice tight fit for water resistance. Just make sure we get that all the way in there. There we go. We're going to go ahead and set that down for just a moment. And grab our five millimeter Allen wrench. And we're going to go ahead and remove this bolt here. We'll just back that out. Now we're going to install our fender and light assembly. So the first thing we're going to do is place the fender behind our brake bridge here. Then we have our light with our bolt through it already to make it a little easier to install as one person. And basically, we're just putting that bolt right back where we got it from. That's all. And there we go. And again, that's a five millimeter Allen bolt. So we'll go ahead and tighten that up. There we go, nice and tight. Last but not least on the fender, we're going to install the legs of the fender to their clips. So we have a four millimeter Allen bolt and an eight millimeter nut here. We've also got a gap between the two where the leg is going to fit right in between. So we'll go ahead and remove that nut and bolt with their washers. There we go. And like I said, that's going to go right in the middle. Go ahead and reinstall your bolt. There we go. And then the nut and the other washer. There we go. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side here, and then we're going to straighten them up and tighten them down. And so once we have both legs of the fender attached to their respective clips, we're going to go ahead and tighten them up. I find that where these fall by themselves tends to be a pretty good adjustment, but as you can see here, we can go up or down. So if your fender's rubbing, you can adjust accordingly. We're going to set them about there and just finish tightening them up. We're going to go ahead and connect our headlight to the main harness here. Again, there is an orientation there. It's very clear to see. Just make sure that's all the way installed there. And last but not least, we're going to go ahead and grab our front wheel and install it into the forks dropouts. So just mine that disc, that rotor, line it up with your dropouts. So once we have our wheel successfully installed in the fork dropouts, and our disc brake rotor successfully installed into the caliper, we're gonna go ahead and tighten our cam on our quick release. So this is a righty tighty action, and we're just gonna keep going, and as we get close, we're gonna start testing for resistance in the lever. It's a little too tight for my taste, so we'll back up a little. And you want it tight enough to where it leaves an impression in your thumb. That's a good rule of thumb. So the last few things you're gonna to wanna to check before your maiden voyage are to make sure that your handlebar assembly is in line with your front wheel. I'm going to use my left foot here, as mine's a little ajar, and straighten that up. Then using a four millimeter Allen wrench, we're going to tighten these two bolts here. We'll get them pretty snug this way. All right. Then we're going to use the T-handle portion to really make them tight. After this, what I recommend is a nut and bolt check. Just go through the bike, make sure everything's nice and tight and snug. 
After that, what I would recommend is taking your bike around your block or around your neighborhood a few times to make sure that the shipping and braking performance is up to your standard.